So this week we covered longevity. Uh, it's a difficult discussion. Um, I understand that some of these topics we're going to be talking about these over these next couple of weeks are things that people don't normally like to talk about. Um, as a social worker, I find that it's helpful to talk about some of these difficult discussions because it can help give us focus. Um, it can initiate changes in lifestyle choices if we need to do that. And it can help us appreciate what we have today. Um, I have a plaque in my house on my wall because um, I'm a little bit of a planner. Um, so I use it to remind myself to stay in the present moment and enjoy what I have. It says, yesterday is history, tomorrow is our future, today is our life. Um, and again, I use it to remind myself to live in the moment. Um, so I suppose it's only fair that I answer the same question that I asked you guys to answer this week. Um, my parents are both in their early 70s, um, so naturally as, a, as their child, um, we have talked a little bit about end-of-life decisions for them. Um, I've encouraged them to see an elder attorney, which they kind of dragged their feet on, but did about two years ago. Um, I know it's something that, again, people don't want to do is think about longevity, um, but it's helpful. So, um, for example, I bought my parents' house, and um, nursing homes can come after assets that are within the family, even though we bought it, and it is ours and our name is on the deed, nursing homes could come after assets that my parents had for um, the previous five years. So um, I unfortunately in my 40s have had to think about if they were to do that, what would that mean? And I've had to set aside some money in the event that that were to happen, which hopefully it does not. Both of my parents are healthy. Um, so looking at longevity, you know, you can look at family trends. So for myself, um, all of my grandparents died at 79 or 80. Um, they were all relatively healthy um, until the end of life and um, died from things like cancer, strokes, um, heart attacks. Uh, my parents are in their 70s and are relatively healthy. Um, but I've also had a cousin who has died in her 40s from breast cancer. Um, I've had great aunts who have lived into mid-90s, um, so it's hard to know. I, As many of you said, you're not sure you could really put a number on it. For me, um, given some of these things, I think if you can live into your 70s, um, early 80s, that's usually a pretty good lifespan. As many of you mentioned, you get to see generations. Um, I would love to see my children grow up, have kids of their own, be a grandparent. Um, but that being said, as many of you mentioned, I don't want to live in chronic pain. Um, I want to have quality of life. So death is actually one of those things that I personally do not fear. When it's my time, it's my time. And I feel like if I live every day to the fullest, um, I can appreciate what I've had. Um, I never let a day go by without telling my kids that I love them numerous times a day. Um, sometimes they don't like that so much, but um, you know, I, you, you can't take for granted things. So um, the other thing is we recently in the last two years have had a good friend die in his early 40s. Um, and it's a good reminder again to embrace what you have. Um, and live your life to the fullest every day. So there were other topics that you guys covered this um, chapter, things like pain, stress, and a lot more. We could spend a whole semester on some of those topics. As a social worker, we have to be trained on um, pain every three years. We have to provide um, continuing education credits. Um, I know that there are statistics that stress contributes to about 80% of illness, so we have to be aware of the impact of stress. That mind-body connection is um, something that researchers are learning more and more about, that that stress comes out some way, somehow, um, and pain is connected to our lives a lot. I've had some of you as students in other classes and have shared that my husband has psoriatic arthritis. Um, and it was very debilitating for many years until he was able to get on medication and get a diagnosis 
to give him back quality of life. Um, and I can tell you without a doubt that he is a different person today than he was three years ago, four years ago, and compared to where he was 10 years ago in life. Um, you know, so think about things like the opioid crisis and how that is impacting uh, many people. We know that, um, that some people get addicted to opioids from things like wisdom tooth surgery, um, or, or other surgeries due to um, activities, um, risk-taking that they've had in earlier um, years of their life. So lots of stuff that to, to think about in this chapter. Um, all right, have a good week.